Welcome back to Global Marketing Day. I'm your host, Casey Gillette, here in New York. Big thank you to SEM Rush for putting this on. We're at our 26th presentation of the day. Uh, we're a little under, a little over halfway there. Uh, if you're just joining us or just a refresher, the way that this works, every 30 minutes we have a new panel. It includes a 15-minute presentation followed by a 15-minute discussion, um, except for this one. This is the exception. We actually have a full 30-minute panel, which I'm really excited about. We've been broadcasting for, like I said, about 13 hours, 24 hours of marketing around the globe. We started in Sydney, London, we're here in New York, then we're going to San Francisco. So uh, we have so much good content to go. So uh, like I said, we have a fantastic panel for you, uh, introducing some of our guests here. Uh, the panel is called The Future of MarTech, which I know is something that everyone is, is big on right now. It's really important. Um, it's led by Eugene Levin, Chief Strategy Officer of SEMrush, one of the first investor investors to spot SEMrush, so thank you. Um, after joining the company as Chief Strategy Officer, he helped quadruple company revenue and raised over $40 million. Very exciting. Um, and we are joined here by Dave Gearhart, VP of Marketing at Drift, and Seth Bismertic, CEO of Conductor. So um, since joining Drift, uh, you were employee six? Eight. Eight? Okay. Yeah, I, I usually write my own bio, so I said six probably sounds cooler, but <laughs> it it's, does. it's eight. It does. So um, obviously help create this company around conversational marketing that you know I know 150,000 plus businesses use. Um, Seth leads a group of 300 people at Conductor. I think most of us in the space are familiar with, with both companies, all companies really. For the audience, if you have questions, this is a panel, it's an open discussion, but please feel free to submit your questions at globalmarketingday.com. So I want to kick this off with obviously uh, the question that everyone always wants to know: What are the Martech trends? So, uh, Dave, what do you what do you see happening in the coming year? I think the biggest I think the biggest trend that 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 we think about a lot and that we're seeing in the market is if you go and look at look at some of the most disruptive companies over the last decade, right? They've all kind of focused on this one thing, which is removing friction. Uh, I'll just think of a couple examples, right? Like Peloton is a company that's really hot right now. What they've removed friction from going to the gym. Uh, Facebook removed friction from finding and connecting with friends. Uh, Netflix removed the friction from finding entertainment and going and find movies. I think the big thing that 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 we're seeing in there's one industry that's still behind, and that is us in, in kind of the sales and marketing world, which is like we typically tend to add more friction to the buying process. And so I think the big trend is we can talk lots about you know um, chat and bots and video and email and, and everything you, that we can talk about in MarTech. But I think the one kind of underlying theme is that the companies, the products, the, the brands that are going to win are all focused on removing friction. And that especially applies to, to MarTech. Yeah, and Seth, I'd ask you the same thing. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I think there's the, we see just a giant movement of companies bringing things in house. Uh, when we started the company over a decade ago, and 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 then way beyond that, the, the traditional sort of marketing model was you have small teams, highly leveraged, and you outsource everything to the traditional agency model. What we just see happening really across the board with all of our customers, um, from thousand person organizations to the biggest companies in the world, are bringing more in house. Uh, having more distributive teams, uh, the creative talent becoming more valuable as an in-house resource, and uh, really the traditional agency model really being disrupted, where um, where the idea of like giving everything over to a third party to run it all for you is just not working. And uh, new sort of agencies or new outsourced folks that are doing project-based work or more integrated you know, sort of talent models are becoming more valuable. But generally, everyone's looking to, I think, build things on their own, build the strength to do it on their own, and uh, develop their in-house teams. Yeah, there was just um, a study the other day that came out around that that said companies now have like 20 percent more uh, have moved their agencies and everything in house than even like two years ago. Um, I'd ask you the same thing. What are the trends that you see happening? So, so I, I would actually say trends that we see very much uh, overlap with what the guys shared. So, um, you know, in terms of bringing everything in house, I think the the biggest issue was uh, siloed projects. Like you would have agency that runs uh, social media or another agency that runs mm -hmm. video advertising. So now companies want to do everything simultaneously because users interact with your brand simultaneously. They don't care who actually did video and who is running social media. They want to have the same, you know, similar experience across all platforms. And brands would want to deliver the same message across same platforms. And that leads to the trend that we see among our user base 
is that people try to reuse content and, and um, leverage it across multiple sources. So if I have a webinar, I would do a transcript. I would do a couple short tweets. I would post a very short 15-second video on Facebook explaining just basics about this webinar and then drive them to a long read page. So that's one of the big trends that we see, like unification of the, of the marketing approach. And then in terms of decreasing friction, I think uh, there are many ways to decrease friction in transaction, but educating customer is, is a big one, you know, big part. And I think, yet again, content marketing have been around for a you know, very, very long time. I think it never been top of the mind of executive and it's starting to be, which, uh, you know, also uh, probably very, very good for the, for the industry it's and for consumers choice. because they, they will be able to get educated in a pace that they want without really pushy salespeople. Yeah. Um, you know, and on that, on, you know, thinking about trends, you know, MarTech has been this like hot topic for what, like 10 years now. It's like, ah, it's, it's never going to leave. Um, what are some of the biggest disappointments we've seen when it comes to MarTech? And, and Eugene, maybe you can start us off. Um, my biggest disappointment uh, is uh, voice search. So, so it, I'm, I'm not saying like it, it useless or whatever, like people use it. But people use it for cases that would not allow marketers to benefit from it. Like when someone search, uh, asks what time is it now or what weather is in London, doesn't help me as a marketer to do my job to reach out to my audience. So from this point of view, what we see is that there are some fancy implementations that are done not necessarily to get any sort of ROI, but just because management feels it's cool. And then I'm still, I still have to see large-scale projects that actually delivered value in terms of voice search. And then on Google, technically voice search is just top three results. So if you're optimizing your content for regular search, then it's more or less optimized for Google voice search. Um, the only really interesting exception from this um, people optimizing for natural language queries. That's, that's a good one, but yet again, we've started seeing this even before voice search. Sure. Yeah, and same thing, you know, any disappointments that stand out to I, yeah, you? Yeah, I think, I think the biggest disappointment is, is like, uh, I think MarTech is amazing and it's, it's, it's changed our industry and it's, it's helped marketers like me prove what we do is valuable to CEOs, right? Like, hey, here's why you should invest in this uh, marketing. Um, but I, I, I do think MarTech has actually made most marketers just dumber. Like we, <laughs> we have just, I think we've over-rotated and we have just thought that like, oh, I can just buy a bunch of technology tools, slap them on my website and like magic's gonna happen. And I think that the most important skill in marketing is actually not marketing technology. I think, look, it's 2019, it's gonna be 2020. Technology is table stakes. If you're not using technology to market, like we shouldn't, you, you know, we shouldn't even be having this discussion. I think for me, the thing about marketing that we've forgotten is that marketing is all about people and understanding people and how to move them. And so the thing that I've been obsessed with for the last couple of years, thanks to um, my boss, our CEO at Drift, uh, David Cancel, he just, he was like, look, forget about marketing tech. You're gonna figure that part out. Go back and study people. So, you know, I went back and studied the direct response advertising, um, social psychology, right? Uh, Robert Cialdini's book, The, the uh, Six Principles of Influence, right? If you can understand those things, you're gonna be amazing with the combination of MarTech. I think, you know, I, I interview a lot of people, talk to a lot of people. The, the average marketer today is just showing up and they're like, I know how to create some some workflows in, in, a, in a marketing automation system and like you sh that's why you should hire me we're like I'd rather you have a deep understanding of of what makes people tick and how to motivate them and their emotions and their desires and their beliefs and their wants and their needs and then we can really easily teach you how to use MarTech so I think going back to really understanding that all marketing is is understanding people uh, and that's going to be the one thing that's going to be true forever, right? Uh, in five years, everything that we do in marketing is replaced by AI and, and, and voice search, right? Well, you're still going to have to know what motivates people. And, and so that's really been like, at least selfishly, my big focus as a marketer. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about data and it's like you can 
everyone can have, have data. It's what you do with it. Yeah, and that, that's not to minimize the importance of data and technology. I just think that like that is table stakes. That is marketing today, right? That is that is you have to have all those things set up in order to to run a business. Just like you needed you needed to have a website and have email like a decade ago. You now need to have this kind of basic tech stack, and the and the differentiator is going to be um, people. But then also the other big differentiator. I really think that like cre uh, creativity is the only differentiator that company have today because technology is all going to look the same and even if uh, I think that we have the best product in the world and I tell you that you're not going to believe me because I'm a marketer who's telling you that we have the best product in the world and so the way we can win you is by building a brand and that's really going to be be thinking more creatively and doing more creative things than people in our industry. Um, you know, thinking about that, talking about the landscape, um, I think we've all seen like Scott Brinker's like MarTech thing right now. It's unreadable, right? It's at the point now it's unreadable. And I think there's like 7,000 tech companies now yeah. just touching marketing. Um, you know, I guess, Seth, maybe why do you think it's so fragmented? Um, but also, do you think it's harder now to build a MarTech business than it was maybe 10 years ago? Sure. Well, you think about the entrepreneurial side of all these companies. You need like a magnifying glass to see all the little logos yeah. on that 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 uh, the Lumascapes and 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 that chart. It's the the barriers to entry to starting a business are is, are are really reduced to, to to very little relative to what it used to be. So, whether it's um, whether it's being able to set up your office in a WeWork, whether it's being able to light up a server on Amazon, there's all of this, uh, the, the friction to starting a company, the cost to, to, to do it, the availability of capital is just tremendous. So um, I think that there's a lot of folks who started companies, they saw a problem, that was a real problem, they built a solution, they they didn't think it all the way through, they, didn't, they built a solution that perhaps, you see a lot of these companies that have built great products for the enterprise, in terms of solving an enterprise problem, yet it's just one of a thousand problems that maybe three people at an enterprise would have, and the cost of hiring a sales team to sell a product that a company might spend you know, a couple hundred dollars a month for, the model doesn't work, and then on the other side, in the enterprise, they don't want to have thousands of tools. They want to have less systems that talk to each other and that work with more people but are still best of breed. So that, that's been, I think, the, the rise of, a, of a, lot of these, uh, a lot of these companies. And I think what we're going to end up seeing is, and, and we're going to end up seeing is that a lot of these uh, products end up coming together and either they go out of business, either they get consolidated. And you know, I think companies just want less tools to do more things for them. Yeah, and you do not. That might go to you, right? Like SEMrush has integrated a ton of things. Um, you know, what do you see happening there when, when it comes to that? So, I would I would agree with Seth. It's easier than ever to start business in Martech. I think it is harder than ever to scale it. So, so you can start. We can reach initial traction through some word of mouth, and then it's very hard to to get bigger. Uh, the reasons would be, as Seth uh, said, people want platforms that solve everything. That's, that's how we have been building our product. We are fine if, if, if someone has point solution here and there, but in general, we want to have bigger uh, share of their time that they spend with us. Uh, and um, it's, it's more compelling for businesses as well. So in some areas, it's, it's starting to be so bad, it's, it's impossible to scale even good product. Like um, in social media, technically some brands uh, are so dominant in their niches that even if I have you know, marginally better product, even 50%, even let's say better product, even if I have better price, I would not get enough attention to scale it. Because only 24 hours a day, People work only a fraction of this. Out of this time, they can spend only a fraction of time exploring landscape, and landscape so big and fragmented. And I cannot buy my, myself this attention because bigger company will pay more than I can. So, so that's why I think people who are already there, who are already scaled, are lucky. People who are not there uh, would have a hard time moving forward. 
Um, I, I think oh, that's a good. Th- yeah. I actually think that's a good thing, though, because I think what it does is you can't. It takes away all the kind of gimmicks in, in marketing, right? Like uh, you can't just win because you were the first person on a channel and you can own it. And so, like at least for me, from the world that I'm in, like I, I love that challenge because that means that creativity is going to be the thing that wins, not like oh they were the first person to get this channel right and so they were able to just own it and like you know or outbid everybody on this particular you know paid strategy. And so I, it for sure makes things harder um, but I think it's a good challenge for the future of marketing because it forces marketers to not just do the cookie cutter approach like well we're gonna you know they said on this panel that the best time to, to send an email is two o'clock on a Tuesday like everybody listening to this is gonna go send an email at two o'clock on a Tuesday so I do think there it, it does open up lots of opportunities definitely makes I think I think if marketing is harder that is good news for the brands that care about marketing and care about creativity it's bad news for the people who want it who see marketing as a get-rich-quick scheme. Um, you've also, I want to change it just a little bit because you've already t- all touched on this. We're talking about the technology itself, but there's humans, right? You're talking about people, and people are the ones who run this technology and who need it. Um, one of the questions that came in was around the background of marketers. You know, how important it is, how important is it for you know marketers to understand these technologies, to have experience with them, or do you think it's something that, that can be taught? Um, and Seth, do you want to kick it off? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think what um, Dave said was the was brilliant uh, in that. Did you say genius? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I think it, I think it was it was spot. I was really spot on. Um, for years, marketing was about um, you about you have an audience. Mm-hmm. You have a captive audience. You have a, they're watching your commercial. They're listening to your ad. They're you know they're and if you had a better message or you had a better jingle, um, then that then you were a great marketer. Consumers are now fully in control. Buyers, consumers, B2B, B2C, they, they get what they want, they avoid what they don't want, and you can't buy their attention. It's almost impo- it's becoming impossible to buy attention. So at the same time, people are, need more help than ever before. Things are more complicated than ever before, and the willingness for a human being to seek out help is I think probably the highest it's ever been before. I mean, you used to have to you know wait online to talk to the village chief, and then you'd call your local doctor. Now the second like anything pops into your life, a problem, a curiosity, an idea, you just Google it. You ask Siri, you ask Alexa, and on the other side of that, there's no limit to who that can be. It doesn't have to be an, an, an expert or a doctor or a chief. It could be a business. It could be a nonprofit. It could be an organization. It could be a five-person startup. So if you can really understand people and you can understand your customer and their buying behavior, then, um, and then you can connect that with the expertise that sits in your organization, then, um, then you're going to win. And um, I, think that, I think that currency, I don't know the right word for it, but that currency of being really customer first, really customer centric, and then having the ability to connect that with your organization uh, and do that in a way that's digital, I think, th- I think those are going to be the, the, mark, the marketing foundation of, uh, of the future. I mean, we, just to add one more thing, you know, our company started off helping uh, generally large companies with SEO. Now, what's SEO? It's, there's a keyword that someone searches for, and then there's a piece of content that shows up. And when we looked at our business and we kind of zoomed out, it's like keywords represent what people want and need. Rankings represent what people, like a business's or an organization's response. If you just took that paradigm and applied that to all marketing, where everything was about starting with what people needed, and all your marketing was about responding to what people, people needed with your information, and you're, you're, you're not selling them something but helping them with something, then I think that's the, we always tell our customers, you know, you're the, you're the leaders, of, you're the CEOs of the future, you're the CMOs of the future, because I think that's the currency for, uh, for success. Um, I also oh, think just like on the, on the skill set for marketers, though, I do think that, um, I think we've gotten a little bit mushy in skill sets where everybody just wants to do a little bit of everything. I think the thing that's gonna make you stand out and have a a greater impact immediately at a company is like, you do need that one or two things that you are great at. And you don't have to be, obviously if you, you know, we're all trying to be great. Like I I don't know if I will will ever get there. I'm I'm working on it, right? And I think, so you you can't expect some 22 year old who just graduated school to be great at whatever. But I think you do need that one or two core skill sets. And so that means like, oh, this person in their craft, I think marketing, you have to think of it like a craft, right? Their craft is videos. Oh, they make videos. Okay, great. Then on top of that, you have to build a fundamental understanding of marketing because I think that the challenge with creatives is like, yeah, you make video. I just make videos. I don't want to care about marketing. Like, well, then you're not going to make great videos for marketing. Like, we have to find a way to meet in the middle. Um, 
and then this baseline understanding of like how people work. And so I think that's kind of the basic recipe is like, you know, core, uh, core skill, whether that's video, copywriting, SEO, SEM, events, uh, some basic understanding of your, uh, of a business, of the business that you'd be supporting because, you know, uh, content at Conductor is gonna look different than content at SEM Rush is gonna look content different than content at Drift. So you have to be able to, to figure out that lens. Uh, and then the, the third layer of that is to really just understand people. I, I do think that, that we, you do have to, the best way to be attractive to a company in a potential role is to say, here is my superpower. And I, I, you know, in talking to a lot of people, you get that, well, what, what's a superpower? Well, I'm, I'm really great at working across teams and people. No, 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 okay, but like, what is the thing that you can be world-class at? Oh, you're a great copywriter? Now, now we can, now we're talking. Yeah. Um, changing just a little bit, because you guys are right. I mean, we could talk about this forever, right? <laughs> like, at the end of the day, it comes down to psychology and understanding people. Marketing is people. Um, but if you had to start a new MarTech company tomorrow, what would it be? And I'll start with you. So for me, that's super simple. A lot of stuff that we do at SEM Rush. if I had no role in SEM Rush, I would start those things on my own. <laughs> so you, you have to just look at recent <laughs> releases. Um, so we, we are quite bullish on Amazon marketing. So. I think Amazon did extraordinary thing that many people don't see, but they opened e-commerce for an extremely large group of people who would not do e-commerce business on their own. And uh, we are talking about millions of people who now can, can sell through Amazon. They have this distribution channel. They understand the product. They're not necessarily professional marketers in any way, but they have to become. To be competitive, with uh, you know, direct-to-consumer brands who get in, into this space, to all big brands. To get competitive, you need to understand marketing much better. And I think a lot of things we'll do in future will be about helping those people who sell on Amazon understand marketing, understand how they can reach new audiences, be it you know, through search or through advertising or through social media or just through on-page optimization of Amazon listing itself. But you know, the goal will be uh, to help them be more successful. And I think that's kind of really big um, interest and opportunity in terms of market size. And then things go well. You know, world is not limited to Amazon. People sell through other platforms as well. Yeah. I don't want you to give away your big, big no, idea. No, no, no. But. Well, I mean, it's, as the founder <laughs> of the company, it's a lot of what we do are things that we would do if we were starting a new company combined with what our customers want. Um, a big, when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking about, it's very easy inside of a company, you know, sitting at your desk in your cube to be get very myopic, to get very much about like, you know, inside out. And as much as you might want to be customer centric or you might want to embody the spirit of a customer, it's just the gravity is so strong towards being inside out to being so. How do you make it so people who are really anyone who's touching anything that's shared externally? Um, can channel the sort of energy of a customer at any point in time. So how can they access what customers want, what customers need, how customers think about that? But how do you do that in a way that's super lightweight and in their environment, on their phone, in their browser, in their places that they're acting? I mean, this is a lot about how what we think about a conductor and, and, and a little sort of hat tip to things that we're building. Um, that it's like about how do you how do you make it so when you're before you do anything, you can check the customer first and say, hey, customer. Customer, like, what do you think about this? Is this what you want? And if you can do that and make that cycle happen almost instantly, then customers, it becomes a lot easier for businesses to be customer centric. Um, your customers first shirt sure, has people asking, where can they get one of those? This is a conductor t-shirt. Um, <laughs> and uh, send me a LinkedIn message and I'll, I'll get you, I'll get you. I'll send, send one to anyone who, send, who wants one. Okay, you guys, you guys heard it here first. <laughs> Dave, any thoughts like what you would do? Yeah, I've been thinking, I'm debating two answers in my head while you were talking just Great, now. Thank you. Uh, well, one of them was like, I think you guys can build the tech, I'll build a service business on top of this, because I think everybody knows that they should be doing content, but I think most people just suck at it and don't do a good job. And so that's, I don't think we have done a good, a good enough job. I haven't done a good enough job, like as a manager and as an industry, I don't think we've really taught the ability to kind of create 
uh, to create content. Like, I don't just mean like write, I think we think content is blog posts, but I'm talking about, you know, almost the playbook you said earlier, which is like, the playbook of like, okay, we're gonna turn this, we're gonna take this podcast, turn it into a video. That's gonna be three clips over here. That's gonna turn into a book and a and a blog post. Like, we do that in little pieces, but I don't think enough people are are trained in that like kind of full, um, you know, full skill set where you can go shopping for a bunch of ingredients and they can cook an amazing meal. Personally, one thing that I would love to see solved in marketing is I think podcasts are an amazing marketing channel. I've been I've had a podcast since 2014, and it's been they create at least for me it's created a, a connection with an audience unlike any other marketing channel because you know even if you have a hundred only a hundred people listening, mo- most other marketing channels would be irrelevant if it was only a hundred people. But this is like you could have a hundred people like literally they're at the gym, they're walking their their dogs, they're cleaning the house, they're doing whatever. You're in their ears, and it's created this amazing connection. However. Podcasts still are pretty uh, not great for a marketing channel because Apple basically controls, a- Apple and Spotify uh, control you know, 99.9% of where people listen. And it's I, from every podcast I've had, it's more like 80-20 where uh, Spotify has invested a lot in podcasts, but it's still not great a user experience. We Most people still go to Apple or, or some of the other apps, um, but from a marketing perspective, it's not, you don't get, you don't get really, you know, they have Podcast Connect, but you don't get much data and information. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity to, to do something like, um, you know, what, what Wistia has done for video hosting for podcasts. The challenge is then you don't own the, the big platform where everybody is. So I think there's, there's a huge opportunity with audio from a more direct response marketing channel that, that doesn't exist yet. I mean, if you need some seed capital, Eugene might be willing to have. Right. Here. <laughs> yeah. We have about 10 seconds left. So I want to end with this. Uh, I'd love for each of you just to give a tip. You know, what, what do you think people need to know about MarTech? You can learn it. Yeah. Um, I think the, you know, if, if there is one thing that, um, you know, I want you to remember after this, uh, in MarTech, tech is second, and, and then the main thing is to understand how to grab attention of the people. So tech is just a tool, like um, you can learn it, but you need to fundamentally understand what will attract attention from people. Because attention probably most valuable commodity in future, not just in marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, make it work. And if it doesn't work, just keep trying to make it work and make it work again. Don't use it as a scapegoat. That's for, your next for, t-shirt. Yeah, yeah forget, it, yeah. forget it, it out of problems. <laughs> and uh, you know, and uh, it's a tool. But ultimately, the person carrying the tool is really what matters. Fantastic. Well, thank you all so much. Um, let's you. give a big thanks to our panelists, Eugene Levin, Chief Strategy Officer at SEM Rush, Dave Gerhardt, VP of Marketing at Drift, and Seth Bismertnik, CEO of Conductor. If you have some thoughts, share them on Instagram, Twitter, whatever it might be, hashtag Global Marketing Day. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.